Howdy folks, what we're going to talk about today is the Bucklow Spring Suspension Front Fork for mountain bikes. Uh, there's a lot of information on the Bucklow's Air Fork, but there's nothing out there on this Spring Fork, and there's people who might be interested in buying it. So we're going to take a little closer look at it, a little more detail than you'll get on Amazon. Now this is not a how-to replace a front fork video. There's plenty of them on YouTube. So let's get started. This is the fork we're talking about shown on Amazon. As you can see, it's a pretty attractive price. Seems like a good value to me. And you're going to need a headset too. This is the one I went with. Uh, I'm well pleased with this as far as value for money. It's pretty nicely done. And while I was shopping, I saw these. And yeah, it's an impulse buy, but I'm well pleased with them. I'll show you some images of that and talk briefly about them. A quick note about why I was replacing my old fork. If you watch the lower part of the forks here, you can see it moves independently back and forth of the rest of the fork. That's not good, and they are not serviceable forks. All right, let's talk about these forks. Uh, first, let me just throw a disclaimer in. I am a bit of a noob to bicycles. This is my first bike since I was a child. I've been on it four or five months. Uh, I am learning fast. This is uh, one thing I've learned is this was probably not the bike to buy, but here we are. So the fork seems to be really well finished out. Uh, looks good. I can't find any flaws in the finish. Uh, you can obviously tell it's got pretty good travel, 100 millimeters is what they say, and uh, I can't argue with it. I'm not going to go over any jumps to find out. It is adjustable. You can see there's your preload. I haven't messed with the preload since I got it. The other side has the lockout. I haven't used the lockout either, but I flipped it around back and forth. I can tell you it does that. All the mounts and stuff look like they're cast in. If, if they're welded, it's a mighty good job of welding. I like these forks. I, you know, I like the way they look. Uh, one reason why I bought them, uh, rather than buying the air forks, I couldn't find a service kit for the air forks on Amazon. And air forks, I understand, do need fairly regular servicing because they will start leaking down, apparently, after a while. Whereas Springer's are real low maintenance. And that's what I was looking for. And I'll save the money I didn't spend for that new bike I'm going to buy next spring. Which I hope will be a better one. There's the front brakes. I'm real pleased with them. They're the dual pull. So the pads come in from both sides and squeeze the disc in the middle. Which is the old ones were single-sided and not very well done. They were not floating calipers for sure. These have made a huge difference in the braking feel on this bike. It's much more positive, much crisper. Uh, I'm pleased with this. For an impulse buy, it worked out well. And there's a quick shot of the rear brakes. Very easy install, and I'm happy with them too. Before we get to the ride portion of this little video, some of you may have noticed that my stem is really tall. Well, that's on purpose because I am a 68-year-old man and the regular riding position gives me a lot of lower back pain. So I used to use a stem extender, but now I just, uh, when I put this fork on, I just left it longer and used spacers and my back is feeling good. And if any of you guys want to make Pee Wee Herman jokes about my bicycle or me, just go ahead, put them in the comments below, and I'll ignore them later. All right, let's go for a little ride. As soon as I started using these forks, the first ride, I could tell there was a pretty good difference. It just felt softer. Um, I could tell it was smoothing the road out a lot more than the old forks. Uh, I'm going to use a technical term here. It felt floaty. Yeah, floaty, that's the word. Uh, I liked it. It's definitely nice to know that my forks are doing something down there. And uh, I, I, these are pretty good forks as far as I can tell. Again, let me repeat, I am a noob. I'm definitely not an expert, but they felt good to me. So I'm pretty pleased with them. Let's talk about who should buy these forks or who should be interested in them. 
Uh, obviously, people like me with inexpensive bikes, they don't want to put a bunch of money into, but would like to upgrade or actually are in need of a repair. Uh, who else? If you've got an older bike, quality bike, that you want to rejuvenate, fix it up for your grandma so she can go and rob liquor stores, well, that's a good candidate too, I think. Uh, you don't want to pile a bunch of money into even a quality bike that's got a bunch of obsolete technology. At least I don't think you do. That's up to you, ain't it? One other small consideration, the ride height at the front of my bike was tilted up just a little bit more because these forks are just flat longer. They've got a lot more travels and they are uh, they don't sag down all that much when you get on it. So yeah, it's barely noticeable. I don't know if you're really sensitive to your seat angle, you might want to adjust that, but I didn't make any adjustment myself. All right, I'm going home. I hope this video has given you some useful information that will help you in your buying decisions. Good luck!